Sports Beat Sports, J.P. Wyatt. Uh, we speak sports and a few other things, and I'm happy to have with us Mike Hosef on. Mike? Hello. Thank you, J.P. How, how you doing? I am good, and uh, there's so many things in your life. I don't see how you've had time to do all these things in your young, short years, but you've done them. I know you've done them because I've observed many of them, most of them. But you've been city manager of two local cities. You've been city chief of police of two different cities here. You've been city judge. You've been the military service. You run some businesses I, and all these things. And you've been sheriff of Hardin County for 16 years. Man, how'd you get time to do all those things? Well, I might be older than you think I am, J.P. No, you're just a kid. You're young enough to be my son. I might almost be willing to bet on that. Well, uh, okay. I'm going to ask you about, we're supposed to talk sports tonight. Yeah. Did you play any sports? Not really, no I didn't. Football? No, I was junior high, but not in high school. Well, that's football, that's, that's sports. You know, I didn't care if it was peewee. <laughs> so anyhow, had a little that, but uh, then, did, oh, I know what, maybe you uh, at the present are doing something in the way of sports. Uh, just umpiring high school baseball. Oh, well, the baseball season's over. Yeah, it's it? over with now. But uh, during the year, uh, you, you referee, oh, they won't send you, whoever's telling you, she'll be not going to call you and say, yeah, I got city, it's still no. city judgment. No, our, our, our well, what'd you call them? Go ahead. Yeah, our organization assigns us to different places. It, it could be in Woodville or Chester or, or Anywack or uh, uh, Harden Jefferson, uh, Hampshire Finette, Fort Natchez. You know, Port Offer, just just off the bus, Orange County, Jasper County. All right. You, well, you ran one by me there, Woodville. Hey, Woodville and Sheriff uh, Hennigan. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a fantastic story we could tell about him? Oh, well, Sheriff Hennigan was a personal friend of mine, uh, outstanding law enforcement officer, became a real outstanding sheriff. And, uh, of course, everybody knows the story behind Gary Hennigan and building of the parks in, uh, in Tyler County. Yeah. Had he been a state patrolman? Yeah, he was a state trooper before he was sheriff, yeah. He was a dandy, and every time I'd go up at a broadcast ball game, he made sure everything worked great for me. I liked him. Yeah, he's a good guy. And then uh, you mentioned that now. Everybody knows about the sports complex he built, but tell a little about it. What is it? Has he got a ball field? Well, he, he basically built the ballparks in Woodville okay. for, uh, for Little League and High School. Okay. And uh, he, he hustled the donations and gathered people to do the work and uh, he led the charge and he did very well. And a there are a bunch of fields that look like. Yeah, there's several. Mm -hmm. Does a high school play out there at that main field? Yeah, yes it did. Is, is they call it Hennigan Park? Yes it did. Has it got a son or somebody that is sheriff now? Or yeah, something? yeah, the sheriff, uh, you know, here, of course, it was unfortunate that Gary died, but his son uh, is the sheriff now and uh, he's very involved in baseball and uh, seems to be doing a very good job for Tyler County. Do you think he's sort, of, he's sort of heading up the, uh, the Hennigan Park, maybe, in baseball? I, I'm not sure if he's heading it up, but I know he's involved in it. Yeah, and he is the sheriff now. Yes, he is. Oh, lonely. Okay, uh, you said, where'd you go to high school? Coons. Then later, sometime later in your life, you went to college. Where, where, yeah, where, tell started, me something about that. Yeah, when I got out of the military, I went into law enforcement and uh, eventually. and. Uh, when I was working for Silsby Police Department in 1972, I decided I needed more education, and uh, so I went to Lamar and uh, studied criminal justice under the VA bill, and uh, worked uh, worked straight nights at Silsby PD and went to school all day at Lamar. All right. Well, now that you mentioned uh, being uh, Silsby Police Department, uh, where you were also. City chief somewhere else. Where was it? Well, I've been the police chief in Sarah Lake, and I've been the police chief in Silsby. But I was a patrolman in Silsby uh, 40 years ago, 39 years ago. Oh! And I was a police chief there uh, about nine years ago. Oh! All right. Well, let's see. I, I, you know what? I've had a lot of fun, and I had a lot of people tell me a lot of things about Brad Ghost, and I've been out there a few times, and. James Reed took me out there and we took the superintendent and we thought we lost him and all that kind of stuff. And I've had a lot of fun. I, I bet you being, being sheriff, you probably heard or saw or knew something that you could tell me about about the, the Brad Ghost. Well, believe it or not, the old Ghost Road, it's 
it's uh it's famous. Uh, of course, I patrolled it in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, and uh, I've caught people out there from all over this country. Nah, see. They, they come from out of state, from a long way off. They've heard about the Ghost Road and they want to come see it. In fact, from China even. Go ahead. I, know I never, I can tell you I never that caught that. a Chinaman out there, but I've caught a lot well, of people. Well, I think they were. Yeah. They were. Go ahead. Yeah, I've, Go ahead. I've, caught, I've, I've run into people out there from all over this, all over the United States. Yeah. Okay. The reason I know about these guys from China, there were four of them. Judge uh, McKinney called me and said, Bring us from Ghost Certificate, four of them, right now. To the hair field, the I did. And there were four Chinese men out there. They came to see the Brad Ghost. Yeah. And they, he gave them those. <laughs> kind of <fun. laughs> I got to tell you just a little bit. There was a dent in the back of my van. We were out there when that little lady from Kentucky and, and uh, the former teacher out here has got all the big birds. And something, as we backed up and started out, something hit like that on the back corner. Of the van. The next few days, I found a dent right there on that back corner. You suppose the ghost did that? Anyhow, <laughs> wasn't long after that, and these, these judges called me out there and they Chinese. And I so I just practically drug one of them. Come on, over here, over here. Now, I had my hand up like this and going to show him where that dent was. That dent wasn't there. Who's supposed to dent removing it? Is he yeah, supposed to ghost remove that dent? Well, there's a ghost dent. Yeah, but don't you know that Chinese? What do you think that Chinese man thinking? I don't imagine he wants to come back around here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, this this is a sports show, and I'm J.P. White, and that's Mike Hosefel, and we talk sports, but we talk a lot of other things too. And some of these people, things these people are telling me are really funny. You just got to hear the story about Coach Kenzie Cruz getting locked in the. In the, in the dressing room, can't go out and coach our ball team playing the state tournament. You got to tell about you got to you hear about the story of Mayor McElroy took Coach uh, uh, Moy up to the lake and threw him out of his boat twice. One time <laughs> when he threw him out. <laughs> yeah, I heard, that, I heard that story lots of times. Yeah, it's funny though, wasn't it? Yeah. You believe he really had him hooked in the mouth? And... No, I think I think he threw him a line and said, "Pull on it. Let me see what it feels like to have something on the line in the line that big." <laughs> Make something up or do something. <laughs> Tell me something. <laughs> well, I found, you know, umpiring is, is a little different world. Uh, when an umpire is behind the plate, he's, he's seeing the, the ball very good as far as whether it's inside or outside. You know, he's got the best view. Sometimes high or low may be a little difficult. Where the fans sitting at a 90 degree angle in the bleachers, they can see the ball whether it's high or low real good. But they can't see whether it's on the plate or off the plate. And, uh, uh, I've noticed a lot of times the catcher is set up outside the plate and uh, the, they'll throw the ball right into his glove and it'll make a popping noise and I'll say ball and he's never moved his glove. So all the fans get mad and think it was a strike. They don't understand he's not even behind the plate. He moves outside the plate. And then they all start heckling the umpire. Yeah. You know, when, uh, so I, feel, I found out how to solve that problem. I had one guy heckling me pretty bad down in Lumberton. And between innings, I walked over to the fence and I, I said, I'll be so glad when they check, get this new rule change in, in effect for next year, it's, it's really going to make things better for us umpires. And this guy was heckling me. He said, yeah, what's, what kind of rule are you talking about? I said, they're going to start letting us sit in the stands at a 90 degree angle so we can see the pitches better uh, like y'all can. Well, <laughs> I pretty well shut him up. <laughs> you know, and, uh, so I've used that several times if I had somebody want to heckle a little bit. There you go. And umpires aren't perfect. They're going to miss one every now and then. Yeah. And, and you know, if you can't accept that, then you've never been behind the plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, that's great. I, I wanted you to tell me something that, uh, well, did you answer my question without me even thinking that? You must be mad. Because I want you to tell me something that most umpires won't tell you. <laughs> but, I, but there's some of these other things, sheriff, judge, or something, you know. The big thing nowadays is, Tell us something that we're not being told, and tell us something that the, that bunch of people won't tell us. Fifteen things or something. About, no. about what? Anything. About what's the, what's you name the subject, I'll tell you what you want to know. Well, all right. Well, wait, let me, I got one little, little story I got to throw in here, and then we're going to get right to that. But one time when I was coaching high school, and uh, we, I took my high school team to neighboring town, well, Coach Robert Edwards was at the town, and so, so a lot of these people know Coach Edwards. And uh, the umpires didn't show up. So Coach Edwards said, hey, said, we'll do it. said, I'll call when, 
I call when my team's on the field. I don't remember which way it put us, but then you call when your team's on the field. Okay, but anyhow, I remember umping, as you say, and I was umping, and, and I wasn't used to wearing one of those masks, but anyhow, oh boy, then I came to pitch, and I followed it right down, and it was too low. And the ball, and I looked up, and that guy had swung. He struck at that ball like, and I said, oh, that's a strike. And I don't, I don't you guys, don't, what do you do when, I want to ask you that, what do you do when you have to change your mind? Do you ever change your mind and make a call different? No, we're professional umpires, you're not. You're a coach. <laughs> <laughs> coaches, coaches are always wrong. <laughs> I know just as soon as you walk out that door, I wanted to ask him, and then I and you couldn't remember to ask him. Um, and they used to tell me I asked one off the wall, and I don't know what, I don't see any questions up there. Um, let's, what are you talk about football? Say what? You yeah. like football? Football? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like football. Well, I played junior high ball okay. in ninth grade. Coach Muckeroy. Yeah, I know Mayor Muckeroy. Mayor Muckeroy. The mayor, yeah. yeah. Old Superintendent Muckeroy. Yeah. He, he was my coach. Yeah, I say, okay. And he had some plays, and uh, there's a couple of us boys that could catch a football pretty good, and me and uh, Joey Rodriguez. Yeah, I know him. And he was the right end, and I was the left end. And we didn't like the calls, the, the plays that Muckleroy put in. So me and Joey got together, and I said, okay, he, had, he liked a quick pass. And I said, when he dumps the quick pass to me, you run under me, and I'm going to hand you the ball while everybody's tackling me. And I, he said, what's the coach going to say? I said, we'll find out after we do it. <laughs> so we did it. Well, they all tackled me, the whole team's on me, and the coach walks over there and he's looking around and Joey's running down to the goal line all by himself. And Buck Roy said, how'd he get the ball? I said, I handed it off to him. He said, why'd you do that? And I said, uh, well, we just decided that'd be a good play. He said, y'all think you know more about coaching than me? We said, oh, no, sir. And he said, well, we're going to put that play in. We're going to use it from now on. And we did. In fact, Joey uh, scored a touchdown that year on that play. It was about, about a 60-yarder or 70-yarder. You know, uh, just little things like that. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Of course I still got the, the Mokoroy's footprint embedded in my rear end. J.P. White, Sports Big Sports. Happy to have my, uh, Sheriff Mike Ozaffel. That, 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 that's the biggie as far as I'm concerned. And all these other things. And we speak sports on Sports Big Sports. And we'll be back next time with another celebrity. Thank you, Jacob. Speak Golf Cars and Motorbikes. Highway 327 West in Silsby has a sophisticated street legal Tony Lamborghini golf cart. Six seaters, four seaters, customized trailers, the three electric bikes, manual pedal bikes, and a motorized Velo Solex. Tires, wheels, trolleys, and accessories for club car and easy go. Sports Speak Golf Cars and Motorbikes. Highway 327 West in Silsby. Call them at 385-3838.